Hello, in this Ionic programming video, we're going to look at the CSS component, which is range. Range, it doesn't really, it's not self-explanatory, just based on the name. You might have heard, it, heard of it as a slider or a UI slider. Let me just turn my phone off, that's all done. So yeah, it's a UI slider. Chances are you've seen them and you've used them and you know what they are based on that name. I don't know why they call them, actually, not why they call them a range because it's a range of values but i don't think it's a very good name but either way very easy to implement and very very powerful so let's just implement a basic range this sounds weird if i said a basic slide they just sound a little better but that's just my opinion so we just put it there with a class of item put a class of range as well inside here we're gonna put an icon. This, I guess, yeah, it's not compulsory, but it just improves the user experience so the user knows what the sliding, because you, by using icons, you don't even have to put any labels to tell the user that they're affecting this property, which is fantastic. So icon, ion-volume-load, if you wanna know, about the different icons that you can get in Ionic. If you just Google Ionic icons, there'll be a link and yeah, you can see pretty much everything there is to know. I'm just gonna use like the low volume. So this is essentially what you would have if you allow the user to change the volume in the application. Now we can have an input. This is actually the slider itself. I just can't bring myself to saying range. It just doesn't sound nice, but this is what the slider range would be. So name of this, I'm gonna call volume. That name would be used to refer to it later on when you actually hook in some code. So it actually does something, maybe obviously in this case it would change the volume. And now it's gonna have an icon at the end just to visualize to the user that one end is high, one end is low. Generally speaking, users know that the left side is the lower side and the right side is the higher side, but by having an icon as well on both sides just helps improve the user experience because that's what it's all about, making sure the user experience is as good as it can be. So let's save this, build our project. And now let's run it in our simulator. Really should have launched the simulator before I started this tutorial. I usually do because it's just a waste of time otherwise. I'll make sure I do it for the next tutorial. So just a few more seconds and it should load. Come on. Almost there. This is it always seems like it takes so long to load when you're loading it in a video tutorial compared to when you're just loading it off video. <laughs> Come on, this is taking ages. I guess in a normal scenario, I'll probably just switch desktop and do something else in the meantime. So, okay, we have our slider and as you can see, we can slide it and Based on the icons, you can see that by going this way, you will decrease the volume and the general assumption would be this would be zero and this would be a hundred or the highest number. Because it doesn't have to range between zero and a hundred. And we'll show you that in a second. So here we go. And also it started in the middle. You might not want it to start in the middle. You might want it to start at a particular point for whatever reason. One of the reasons could be if you might have persistent data. So when the user, let's say sets the volume. So let's just say this is about 75%. It might save that. So next time the user launches it, it doesn't want it to be at the default value, which let's say was 50. You want it to be at what the user set it last. So we can do that as well. We can also use these color classes as we can with most CSS components in Ionic. 
what we're going to do is create a list with a bunch of ranges. So just put a div. You could use an unordered list for this as well. I'm just going to use a div list. And in here, just grab this from here like so. So copy and paste it. Make sure the formatting's all good. So now let's have a look at what we're dealing with. So yeah, what we're gonna do is change the item range to have a color. So to do this, you do range dash one of these colors. I'm gonna do royal. Uh, gotta spell it correctly for it to work. And the next thing I'm going to do is, I'm actually going to leave that, copy and paste it again, change it to dark this time. And I'm leaving the icons as they are, but you will obviously have different icons for different types of inputs. Leaving the name as well because we're not using them, but you would obviously change that as well. So for the input, we want to change the min value. I'm going to put zero for the max value. I'm going to put five. And for the current value, I'm going to put actually, I'm going to leave, yeah, actually, I'm going to set this to be five. So it's at its maximum value by default. And now we can actually save this, build it. And now we're ready to run it in our simulator. It's gonna be a lot quicker now because we've already loaded up the simulator once. So here we go, we got our three different ranges. As you can see, the second one, which we just added with brackets here, we didn't add any value. so. By default, it was set to, well, the middle value. And as you can see, we can move it like so. And the color is there. I'm actually gonna change this from dark to energized, because otherwise it just looks like the other default one. They are very similar. So let's rebuild this. Rerun it in the simulator. And here we go. So, whereas this one, it is at value five, which is the maximum value because we set the value as five. And now let's move this one. As you can see, the jumps are a lot bigger simply because there's only five increments. So one, oh, I'm not dragging it. One, two, three, four, five. And obviously if we were to have, let's just say 25, Let's change this to 25. So there's a lot more increments, but it's still small enough. I mean, it's still, what was, what was I small enough? Yeah, the maximum is still small enough for you to be able to see the individual increments. It's just, it's not smooth like the other one. Because by default, it's zero to 100, which means there's 100 different intervals and on a phone, it looks like it's actually moving smoothly because that's the reason this looks like it's moving smoothly because there's a bunch of increments. Whereas with this one, it started at five. As you can see, there's a lot more increments, but they are still visible. So that's it for ranges. If you have any questions, feel free to post them on our education platform, sonarlearning.co.uk. There'll be a link in the description. Alongside that, there'll be another link to the source code from this video and the source code from every other video in this series. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and leave us a comment. And as usual, thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day.